the $500 of the $750 penalty be suspended on condition that um, there are no further violations of any PDC statutes or rules for a period of four years from the date of the order and that the penalty is, is uh, paid uh, within 30 days. Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, amend the penalty to $500 the suspension and payable as long as um, there's no further so, so $250 is payable within 30 days, otherwise there's follow-up by the staff and collections, and et cetera, all the steps we take. The remaining $500 is suspended uh, on condition that there be no further violations of PDC statutes or rules for a period of four years. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Kuzik. Um, As a follow-up. Oh, I was just going to have Mr. Young tell the next steps on this. And Mr. Kuzik will be sending out an order to you within two weeks of sh uh, showing the amended um, conditions and the uh, requirements for you to pay that uh, non-suspended portion. I was just going to say as a follow-up action. Okay, well, I, I still think your fee is a little steep, but I you don't know what else I can tell you for somebody that's just trying to do a service for their taxpayers. We appreciate that. Do you have uh, Just as a follow-up for staff. That, uh, the, the, okay. um, thank you, Mr. Kuzik. that the rule regarding uh, motions for reconsideration um, we, that we review that and get clarity and provide clarity to the staff about the 21 days and look at the issue of business days and anything else we need to do to clarify that this, it comes before. it's so infrequent I think that this happens that we haven't really reviewed that rule. I just can't imagine there would be 40 days and two different requests that can be made after a final order or something. And, and I haven't seen that, so I'd like to see it, I guess. Yep, we will look at that, definitely. And the next matter is uh, the National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Laws. I understand that maybe an appeal has been filed. Would that affect my presentation here? Or? Uh, there has not yet been an appeal, but this is not yet a final order. Um, what happened is that uh, Mr. West, I believe, filed a motion for reconsideration that was denied by the court on May 6, expanding the appeal period until June 6. Uh, I don't know if it, I, I don't believe it will impact what's going on here unless it was your intent to wait until the um, decision became final. The next step Mr. West could take would be filing for a petition for discretionary review. There is no guarantee the Supreme Court would even hear this matter. I'll proceed. Okay. Um, this is the case involving the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws National, referred to as Normal, Normal Washington State, and Normal Pierce County in PDC case number 13-016. Uh, this related to a citizen action or 45-day letter that was filed with the Commission on September 27, 2012 by Arthur West and three other individuals against Normal National, Normal Washington, and Normal Pierce County, alleging violations of 4217A by failing to register and report as a political committee, disclosing contribution and expenditure activities in support of Initiative 502, a 2012 Washington State initiative uh, concerning the legalized of marijuana for commercial purposes. Uh, the complainant in the 45-day letter stated that Normal and its affiliates were conducting substantial campaign activity that they felt their primary purpose um, required them to register and report with the PDC. Um, on December 12, 2012, prior to PDC staff completing our investigation, uh, Mr. West and the individuals involved filed a citizen action in Thurston County Superior Court in accordance with 4217A alleging that Normal National, Normal Washington, and Normal Pierce County, as well as the American Civil Liberties Union, which had also been investigated by staff from a similar 45-day citizen action letter by the same um, individuals, 
may have violated 4217A by failing to register and report as a committee. Um, summarizing Mr. West's appeal, he filed a number of appeals in 2013, 2014, and 2015 related to uh, the normal Washington, normal national, and normal Pierce County. Provided you a copy of that August 12, 2016 opinion published by the State Court of Appeals um, in which they affirmed the Thurston County Superior Court dismissal of Mr. West's suit. Um, PDC staff, as part of my investigation that was put on hold once the citizen action began, um, I reviewed the database and the campaign finance reports filed by New Approach Washington, which was the political committee registered and reporting um, with us in support of Initiative 502. Uh, I found no monetary or in-kind contributions reported by Normal National, Normal Washington, or Normal Pierce County. In addition, I reached out to the um, folks in charge or representatives of those three organizations and asked them questions about uh, what they did. They didn't solicit contributions. They didn't make expenditures. Um, and they didn't meet any of those tests in uh, PDC interpretation 02, 0702 concerning the primary purpose test and the definition of a political committee. Thus, my investigation that wasn't completed but had been underway uh, found no evidence that any one of the three organizations met the definition of a political committee as defined in 4217A005 subsection 37. So our conclusion was that we suggest that the commission advise the Office of the Attorney General that the evidence does not support the allegation that either Normal National, Normal Washington, or Normal Pierce County were a political committee with the Public Disclosure Commission and thus had no reporting obligations with us and that we send a letter to the Attorney General recommending that no further action be taken. Thank you. Do you need an action from us in order to do that? I believe I so. Like. Let's see, Commission. Well, I'll try to structure a motion to see if it's simple. I move that PDC case 13 016 be returned. Uh, to the Attorney General's office with a recommendation for no further action. Sorry. There's been a, a motion and a second to return PD case 13 016 to Attorney General's office with a recommendation of no further action. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. And opposed? motion passes unanimously. Thank you for all your work. Thank you. And Kurt, it looks like we need to add a, a case number just in the second paragraph under background. It looks like we're just missing one. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is process review update. Turn it over to Director Lopez. Or Lori, whoever wants to make it. Oh, that team. Uh, yeah, Lori really did the. Um, Lori and James have organized the process improvement session yesterday. We had been on a hiatus for a while on our regular process improvement meetings because uh, Lori and James are our facilitators and they've been busy getting the website. Going. But we're regular. We're ready to return, and we took up. Um, a question of what's the process um, to be used when you have your dispositive um, order or letter on an enforcement case and then what do you do to take the case to um, closure and where does the file go and what happens with the electronic file. So that's what we worked on yesterday. So we have to let you sort of describe our process. Well, <laughs> Commissioner Johnson. Um, so we took a different approach to this particular topic than we have in the past. We decided to look at the end result and what did we want out of the end result when a case is closed, identified all of our objectives, and then went from there. 
in a perfect world, how do we meet those objectives? And um, we brainstormed, spent some time yesterday brainstorming each step of the process. And um, we'll reconvene next week and hopefully finish up and order the steps, decide who's going to do what, set some time frames by which the steps need to be done. We've invited Janet to join in the process because she has some connection to um, following up and make sure payments are paid. She's also um, working on cleaning up our shared drive. So there's some connection there. You want to add anything to that? Um, I caught most of what you said <laughs> before I walked over. So no, I don't, I don't think so. I think we're off to another good start. I guess I would add on this. Um, one of the things that's been really interesting to be involved in, in these uh, process discussions is that there's a real value to talking through um, what what does what do we do in this situation or that situation because I think what we, what has been identified is that over time um, we don't necessarily always have a standard process. Every person and, and the enforcement team that benefits from the fact that um, all three of the members have been with the agency for a really long time. So what's happened is that over time, everyone's process has become a little bit customized, and each one is a little bit different, and each one has something really good about it. And so when we talk, we can actually come up with, you know, I like that piece of what you do and this piece of what this person does, and in the end, we'll get it all written down and we'll actually have a process that I think is, is going to be better than anything we've had before. Um, but it, it does take a while because a lot of these things are, you don't necessarily think, how do I do this thing that I do on autopilot when I close out a case? You know, who am I sending things to and, and how does it look and, and what else should I be aware of? So it's been a valuable process, but it is somewhat um, time consuming. Well, it's only time consuming because it's a collaborative process. And like Evelyn said, everyone has ideas and we want to hear all of those ideas. And so it's really worth putting the time in and um, coming up with a process that everyone can um, has an appetite to keep going, to, to sustain. And, uh, for the benefit of Commissioner Johnson, I think you need to go back to where you put things on the wall so when he comes in, he can see you. <laughs> well, they have things on the wall <laughs> yeah. in the training room. We <laughs> used a different room since we didn't want to chunk up this room, knowing you would be in here today. Clutter is a better word. <laughs> No, but it's great that you have the opportunity now to keep going on the process. And I know it's hard to come up with the time now, but that will re reproduce more time for you later in the long run. So thank you for doing that. And we'll move on with Executive Director Step Report. Okay. Well, we've talked about the auto 45-day uh, letter, and I've got a plan for dealing with that. So let me just touch on a couple of other things. Um, the first is our budget. As you can see, you know, we continue in discussions with both the Attorney General's Office and OFM about what to do about the big hole in our budget um, because we've had more um, need for legal services than we had budgeted for. And uh, again, I, I actually do still continue to have every hope that this will resolve well because we, you know, we anticipate that there will be additional resources in the future to uh, make up for the expenditures we're dealing with now. Uh, we just have to come up with a mechanism for taking care of the accounting today um, so that everyone is satisfied that uh, all the reports look good in the end. Um, but more than that, I can't really say other than uh, both the Attorney General's Office and OFM were discussing um, more creative options and going up their chain of command to get, um, I guess, the, the buy-off if, if what the final decision is is to come up with the plan for either the Attorney General's Office holding the funds and not billing us, or if the plan is everybody understands that we're not paying our bills, whichever way you want to go, that's probably going to get the end result. So we will resolve it. So we solved it yet. Um, on the other follow-up was uh, the discussion we had last month 
about initiative sponsors and whether the initiative uh, signature sheets needed to have sponsorship identification like political advertising. Um, as you will recall, Senator Roach asked for an Attorney General's opinion after our meeting, and uh, the Attorney General's office has decided to do an informal opinion, and they expect to have that out. They were trying to expedite it, so I think they were going to try to have it out um, by the time that um, petitions were being turned in with their signatures, and we'll see if that if that comes about. Now, that certainly does not foreclose the commission taking up this issue and looking at it and determining whether um, either uh, it looks like a, an issue for a um, commission interpretive statement or uh, rulemaking or something like that, but it'll be nice to have the additional information coming from the Attorney General's office on what they think um, the law looks like. So we will see what they have to say. And I think that was it from my um, director's report, but were there any questions on any of the items? Just that um, the delegation of authority policy, you're thinking that'll come back next month? I think it will. We have started asking other agencies for copies of their delegation authority to get some you know, best format, but we haven't, so far we have one from the Arts Commission that um, is, is very light. Um, so we'll continue digging and coming up with something by the June, before the June meeting. Okay, you know, the, uh, you might check for maybe Penny with uh, the UW Division because okay. there's an awful lot of delegations of resources from board of regents to president and then we'll do the administration, so we've got it down to... Uh, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, thanks. That's a really good, good tip. That is a great analogy because one of the things that we had talked about was what's the commission's role in, in authorizing delegation or reviewing delegation after... Uh, do you want to do compliance next? Sure. Okay. For the enforcement compliance team, um, I've actually done a little change to their chart that they don't know about yet, but I decided that it was time to turn anything from 2015 into a blue item. Uh, previously, it was only things that were, previously it was to, sh the color things showed older cases that were before we moved into the fresh desk system in October. But we were used to being in the fresh desk system, so now I, I wanted it to reflect time frames. So anything that is uh, white or non-colored is current 2016. Blue is anything for 2015. There's a little color key at the very back of your um, chart. Um, 2013 is orange and 2012 is kind of a, a light red. We are almost out of uh, some of these items, which is a good thing. We're down to 20 active matters, and we can uh, take the NRA and the normal cases off the list after today, and that will bring us down to 18. We have most of the matters um, either in final stages of leading up to the report of investigation being written or moving toward full hearing or brief hearing. So I think we're making really good progress. And what is equally important is we have, we have still not received too many new complaints. Uh, the new complaints go first to Jacob, and so they are uh, mostly, they are on page seven of this chart. Uh, a complaint uh, involving the Tim Probst campaign, a complaint regarding the Bill Bryant campaign, and a complaint regarding a uh, Mike Leiter campaign, which is a, a Yakima campaign. And we are we should be able to resolve all three of those. Um, certainly the Bryant and Lida ones should be resolving fairly soon, and then the Tim Probst one may need to go to a brief hearing um, either in June if we can get it scheduled or if not, then in July. But we can keep moving on all of them. And that's been our goal is to try to clear out, well, to try to clear out everything that's old, but also try to clear the decks to the extent we can before the new complaints start coming in for this election season. We should start seeing those pretty soon, particularly with regard to, um, well, and the LIDA um, complaint is one of them. Um, the complaint is that his signs have gone up on a fence that um, is around the city motor pool and whether that fence is a public facility. Um, 
So we are going to start seeing complaints about campaign signs and other things very soon. But the um, team has made really good progress in clearing things and moving things very expeditiously. The last page is just a summary of new matters that have come in, uh, matters that have closed either through um, uh, either they didn't merit investigation or they were uh, warning uh, brief hearings, full hearings. So we continue to close more matters than we open and um, doing quite well. I understand the status on the bottom of page 6487 map. What kind of looking for? Oh, yeah, I guess that is rather cryptic, isn't it? Um, so we previously had a complaint against the Washington State Republican Party involving, um, Kurt can maybe talk about that a little bit, involving was the 2013 campaign. Yeah, it was some Whatcom um, County Council races and some local port races up in uh, Whatcom County. There was an allegation that those uh, uh, the state Republican Party had received earmark contributions and then spent those in accordance with the donor's wishes up in Whatcom County. We didn't find any evidence of that. We had done similar uh, investigations for uh, the Spokane mayor and allegations with the state Republican Party in 2011. And in 2014, I believe, in Clark County regarding a county commissioner race. So we had already looked at that earmarking allegation from two um, additional complaints that had come in. As a process of reviewing the uh, state Republican Party, they transferred some money, uh, contributing some contributions to the Whatcom County Republican Party. And we saw some discrepancies in their reports that um, warranted a staff generated complaint. And um, we logged that complaint in, I believe, about five weeks ago, uh, and the council for the Whatcom County Republican Party asked for an extension until June 1st based on the state convention and the presidential primary and all the issues going on there. So um, that's where we're at. I don't know if I could answer any more about that. or that, that's, I just couldn't draw that from this. Uh, Absolutely. So right, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Unfortunately, I guess we have chief technical officer, James. So, um, I have just uh, first a little bit of kind of fun facts to share. Um, since we brought the new website live, um, we've been watching really carefully how it's being used, how people are searching, whether or not they're finding the results that they're after. Um, and so just broadly um, in the last month, and these are unique visitors, the way the information is collected tries its best to use browser tracking and things to tell, you know, if you come to the site 20 times that you only get counted once over that period. So um, we've had 32,000 unique visitors to the homepage, 33,000 unique visitors to the query system. So that's kind of an interesting split because Prior to the website update, the query system was used more heavily than the rest of the website. And we can see a little bit maybe about where that's happening because we've got um, 10,000 unique visitors to the um, current candidates. So that means somebody came to the, to the homepage, saw that short list of who's filed most recently, and then clicked on the view all candidates to look at the whole list of what's there. Um, so that's pretty promising for adding that feature to the site. And it's probably drawing some of those folks away from digging way down deep into the search the database functionality because they find what they're looking at, at looking for right there. Um, and then 7,000 visitors using advanced search, a couple thousand uh, getting a new version of Orca because we had a release of Orca in that time period, so we see lots of those. And then lots of folks uh, getting forms. James, when you excuse me, when you say uh, uh, the 30,000 unique visitors to the home page and similar amount to the query function. Are those unique between the two or are those the same unique? Those would be um, unique between the two. So usually what happens is the other lump that's going in the query system is people that are coming from a Google search. And so they're driving right into that part of the website. 
Um, and then of all of those visitors, roughly 10% of them are using the search functionality that's on the homepage, um, which is probably not as many as we'd like because we really sort of emphasized having good search functionality, but it's also promising to see that people are utilizing the search. Um, along those lines, uh, Commissioner Levinson uh, had a challenge for us when we uh, demoed the website a few days ago looking for the term lobbyist. And I've mentioned before that we're going through watching what people are searching for and fine tuning the results. Um, and so we've been continuing to do that. And so now if you go look for lobbyists or you look for candidate or you look for committee or public agency um, in the top links will be one the uh, starting off on the right foot frequently asked questions along with online filing for each one of those separate categories and so we have some good search results for those folks now and we'll continue to watch it over time I've been looking at it pretty frequently right now once every couple of weeks um, but over time we'll go back to probably looking at it once every couple of months and just making sure that for the popular terms we're continuing to drive the search result first to the thing that people are most likely to want to get at. Um, so that's going well. And the only other thing, I have lots of stuff in my written report that I won't rehash, um, but I just wanted to say the other thing that we're doing that I think has been really great is this is declarations time. We get information from the Secretary of State's office about who has declared and we use that to build a list of who basically is going to end up owing us a C1 and an F1. And the other important part of that is we try to correlate the records from the Secretary of State to our existing records. And so if John Smith is running for office and we can identify that we already have a filer account set up for John Smith, we want to pair those two together so we track people over time. Um, and that's always been a really difficult process because of the difference in the way the Secretary of State not only collects names, but also the way they specify offices and jurisdictions is vastly different from what we do. So we spent a lot of work up front working with the Secretary of State's office, getting the full list of office codes that they have for every office and jurisdictions for every office. And we're also pulling in their entire database of voter IDs because we can correlate those with the legal names um, against the declarations. and. I forget when they implemented the process, but the, if you go to register to vote now, um, the Secretary of State's office asks you some identifying information, and they're comparing that against Department of Licensing records and retrieving the legal name that goes along with the voter ID. So it's a great way for us to get past what we did before, which was um, somebody might specify Bob, and that's the way they're declared as a candidate. Um, it would make it really hard for us to tell, are they actually Robert? Um, that's an easy one, of course, but lots of them get a lot harder to tell who people are. So we basically look up the declaration records, we pair it against their voter database, and we get the legal names. We've always been pretty strict about making sure that we have the legal names, and when people put in things that look like nicknames, we correct them, we contact them, and call them. And so um, I think we just ran the last run a few hours ago today. Uh, and it sounded like we've gotten a lot better results on matching the names and a whole lot less uh, creating duplicate counts for folks. So that's been, it's been a little bit of a more difficult effort than doing it manually once, but it's going to pay off big time when we do this again next year and the year after and the year after. And we'll just continue to improve that process over time and work with the Secretary of State to make sure that we have data consistency between the two of us. James, there was a small thing uh, that just we discovered last month, I think, that Seattle Ethics and Elections Commission links to us no longer worked because of the website changes. I just want to make sure we got that addressed. Um, I will double check. I, I actually was just having a conversation with Bob Deweese over at uh, Seattle Ethics and Elections today. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just double check with them. I posted that. the online, I think I maybe sent it to you guys, the online how-to that they use for folks and embedded in that were links to several different PDC website pages. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I, I remember you bringing this up and I think I checked or we, we put in a redirect, it's a small thing. but I can't remember for sure. So. Similarly, does the Secretary of State have direct links to us on their 
They they do. They put it in their voters guide, and that was something that we set up early on when we did the website conversion was so that we redirect them to the right place. Um, but I'll I'll double check because it's possible that I just overlooked it and um, they haven't noticed it. Thank you, James. Thank you. Well, I have no fun facts, so but closing act is always good. The uh, I wanted to follow um, up, circle back on the um, our attempts to ensure that everyone who should is filing the annual personal finance statement for your benefit, Commissioner Johnson. This was a topic that Chip covered a few meetings ago, what goes into the personal finance statement. He explained a little bit about our process of going out to all the jurisdictions statewide at the beginning of the year, remind, asking them to remind their people to file and asking them to confirm for us who is sitting in those chairs, who's currently serving. We don't always know when somebody leaves an office midterm and gets replaced. So uh, part of that process, then we use what they give us to go out prior to the filing date and remind all of those officials across the state that it's time to file. We're always um, having a few who don't. It was about 15% at the end of April. And I believe it was Commissioner Levinson who asked Chip, do you go back to the jurisdictions at that point and tell them that they have people who have not filed? And we haven't because we don't really have a system in place where we can broadcast a message. It's a manual effort at this point. And so um, we thought, well, let's try it this year, even though it's a manual effort and if it's fruitful, then maybe we can look at sometime down the road, automating it a, a little bit. So we've been working on that since the uh, beginning of the month. And uh, those 850 people who hadn't filed as of this morning, we've been able to go through the jurisdictions and um, alert them that 650 hadn't. So we still have a short list to get through. From those 650 that we've given that second notice through the jurisdiction, about half of them have filed at this point. So we're continuing on through the rest of the 250 or so that we still have to go. Um, and then we'll turn over the uh, rest of the folks for the, the compliant or the enforcement team to start their their efforts at getting people to file. So that's thank you for following. Mm -hmm. and I know it's labor intensive, but if it avoids an enforcement proceeding, which is even more labor intensive, it's probably. Sure. And I also wanted um, to let you know that um, at the end of June, we start thinking about the annual report. And I'm just putting planting a seed. If you have messages that you want to send out through the annual report, you can be thinking about that and let me know that, you know, in the next couple of months would be fine. Did we just do one of those? Yes, we did just <laughs> do one of those. Yes. No, I just want to uh, thank Evelyn and everybody who uh, took time to give me a good thorough orientation and answered questions and helped uh, keep me pointed in the right direction this first week or so. For the good of the order? Um, yes, Madam sir. Chair, I did have those appeal rights that we do send out with all orders, so I was going to hand that out now and have a future discussion on that. That's yeah, sorry, that wasn't included with that scanned. Uh, That's order. why we had for the good of the order because everything's purple, especially cupcakes. <laughs> Anything else? If there's not, I would adjourn this meeting for today. Thank you. Good meeting, people. And 